In this video, I'm going to look at the business and then I'm going to tell you if it's the right time to buy the stock. Feel free to skip around. First, we're going to look to see if that return is justified or not. Don't buy this stock until you have an idea of what you're investing in, ignoring the hype and FOMO and just look at the business. I look at the P ratio as a measure of the stock speculation. If it's high, it means investors love the stock and anticipate a lot more is coming. On the flip side, if it's low, it means people aren't in love with the stock and aren't too hot on its future. That's where you usually find hidden gems when speculation is at an all-time low. As we progress through this analysis, you'll see at the top right my updated opinion on the company. In some cases, there's no P.E. ratio. That means the company has no earnings and its value is completely derived from pure hype around its stock. In that case, we're going off the whims of speculation with tons of FOMO, which I tried to avoid altogether. Relatively speaking, we're looking for a P.E. ratio lower than 23, ideally lower than 2.99. Next, I look at the projected earnings growth over the next five years as a meaningful way to assess if the company is still growing at a reasonable clip. High growth often means high speculation, but that can sometimes be justified if the P ratio isn't too insane. Even mediocre growth is fine too, albeit it's a stable company with predictable earnings year in and year out. It's the low growth you want to try to avoid because it can be a sign of hard times coming for the company. Relatively speaking, we're looking for earnings growth higher than 10% compounded annually, ideally higher than 50%. Profit margins get into the meat of the business. High margins mean the company commands pricing power and it can generate revenue at a low cost. This opens doors to further developments of the company's products, as well as acquisitions, translating to more growth. However, if we're looking at low profit margins, we need to look deeper into the business. It's not always bad, but low profits don't have as much room to maneuver and grow. It can still be stable, but that stability is often priced into the stock. Relatively speaking, we're looking for profit margins higher than 12% ideally higher than 52%. Furthermore, the company's return on equity is another important part of valuing the business. It goes hand in hand with profit margins. The ROE measures how efficiently the company can generate cash from shareholders. A high ROE in turn fuels high profit margins, which cascades growth. Combine that with a lower PE ratio, you're looking at a great company to invest in. Relatively speaking, we're looking for an ROE higher than 15%, ideally higher than 55%. Lastly, one of the most often overlooked metrics when deciding whether to invest is the dividend yield. In many ways, I consider this the most important metric if you're a long-term investor. A high dividend yield combined with the other four metrics in this video makes a very powerful investment vehicle. If your plan is to hold for years, you want to get something out of it. A dividend is basically passive income. Otherwise, if you're investing in a great business, but it doesn't pay a dividend, it's almost useless to you until you sell it. Relatively speaking, we're looking for a dividend yield higher than 1.25%, ideally higher than 3%. So what you're looking for here is a company with a low PE ratio as possible. That means less speculation around its stock. High projected earnings growth because it means the company has room to expand and develop. High profit margins so that it has the ability to grow those earnings. A high return on equity as an investor because you want your money to be efficiently used to create those high profit margins. And lastly, a high dividend so that you directly benefit from such a good company. This is just one stock, but I analyze a lot of stocks that I don't publish as videos. If you want to access hundreds of other stocks, join my Patreon. You'll get access to all those grades. They're updated all the time. Go to patreon.com forward slash growth shares or click on the link in the description. In reality, there aren't many companies that can perfectly fit these five metrics. That's why when such a company comes along, they're such good long-term investments. But as fast as they come, they quickly become overvalued because opportunities like this don't come around too often. 
let's pivot and look to see when you should buy the stock if you so choose to go that route. I'm going to outline a path based on whether you plan to hold the stock for the short term, the near term, and the long term. If you're a short term investor, someone looking to buy low and sell high within the next month, look at the stock's relative strength index. The RSI measures the stock's momentum and spits out a number from 1 to 100. If you're looking for a great buying opportunity, you want the RSI below 30, ideally lower than that if you want certainty. If the RSI is above 70, I'd stay away from the stock, or as a short-term investor, cut your losses and sell. If you're a near-term investor, someone looking to hold for a year or so, look at the stock's 50-day simple moving average. The SMA 50 measures the stock's current price relative to the average of its past 50 trading days. While many want a highly positive percentage, I'm looking for a negative number as possible. That means the stock is trading far lower than what it's been trading at. That means the stock is cheap, so look for low percentages. If you're a long-term investor, someone looking to hold for years, possibly decades, look at the stock's 200-day simple moving average. The SMA 200 is almost the same as the SMA 50, but over 200 trading days instead of 50. A stock below that average means extreme relative value. At this time horizon, the company's fundamentals, its business, plays a very important role in how the company will go doing forward. If you're looking for even more extreme value, combine the RSI, the SMA 50, and the SMA 200 together and make sure they're all at bargain levels. This isn't as rare as you think, but with an RSI below 30 and the simple moving averages at large negatives, you're looking at very cheap stocks. But just remember to consider the business first and not just the price. Invest wisely and as always, take care of your money.